Okay, so we've got eight. Hi, I'm Frank Hanley. Uh, this is the Feeling Fit with FSHD program brought to you by the uh, FSHD Society. We uh, meet on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. This is the uh, first meeting of August. Uh, next month, by the way, uh, next month, September, we will be uh, our two-year anniversary with this program. We started in September of 2022, um, and we're going strong. So um, if you have the time to join us next month, just as an oh, by the way, um, we'll probably plan up some special fun stuff to do. Um, this session is being recorded. All the recordings get uh, uploaded. They get edited and uploaded to the um, FSHD Society's YouTube channel, so you can uh, catch a replay of that there. Or if uh, friends of yours want to catch this show, they can uh, watch the, uh, the recording up on the FSHD Society's YouTube channel. Um, I have my own um, FSHD resource page. It's uh, my website, frankhanley.com backslash FSHD. That will take you to a, a page that is basically just um, an index of all the programs that are up on the YouTube channel. So you don't have to go play and seek and find because there's hundreds of videos up there, not just ours, but all of the different events that the FSHD Society does. So um, so again, that's frankhanley.com backslash, backslash FSHD. Um, and you can find the next. There's also some PDFs up there, downloads of handouts and links to some other things that I think are uh, interesting stuff for people with FSH to check out. So um, if you want a PDF copy of today's version, um, just drop your name in the chat. And actually, let me open up the chat so I can see what's going on there. Um, drop your name in the chat and we'll get a copy of, uh, of that to you. Um, and let me just bump my, I'm sorry, I have two different screens going here. So if I seem to be looking away from you, it's because I'm trying to uh, get to my my PowerPoint slide. I talk over PowerPoint, not because I don't know what I'm talking about, because there's so much information that we deliver in these, I don't want to miss anything. So uh, understand that. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and um, personal training or getting a personal coach, the uh, pros and cons and the contrasts and the compares of those topics. Renee is joining me. Um, Renee is out on the West Coast in Washington, Portland, Oregon. I'm, I forget where you are, Washington. Washington. And um, I'm in the East Coast in uh, North Carolina. So um, anybody there from not in the United States on the call? I always I always like to check to see where folks are coming from. If you can, um, put in the chat where you are so we could see. Um, this is a, a worldwide group. We get people from all over, the, all over the world joining us. Some of the sessions are actually hosted by folks in Europe or, or other places. So um, again, we're gonna talk about um, physical therapy versus a fitness trainer or fitness training and what the, the benefits are of each of those things. Um, a little bit about me before we go into uh, this too far. Um, I'm an FSHD patient. I was diagnosed in uh, the mid-2010s, around 2012, 2014 is when I was diagnosed. I had a late diagnosis. I knew I had FSHD um, since I was probably in my 30s, but um, it was never officially diagnosed. So um, I had some shoulder issues in my late teens, uh, 93, 1993, I was in my 30s, I developed a foot drop. Um, that's when I went to uh, MDA clinic and uh, was was told I had FSH. That's what the doctor said I had, but I didn't actually have an official diagnosis. Um, like I said, oh, it's here. 2012, um, I started going to Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. 2015, I, was, I did the genetic blood test and I was tested um, type one positive. Um, and now uh, the FSH is really bothering me. It's in my uh, a core and in my hips. So lifting anything in the front, I always joke around, I struggle with a bag of groceries. 
um, and climbing steps now has become a big challenge for me. Uh, I was introduced to the FSHD Society in 2019. I was living in Maryland, but I went to a, a meeting, was in Philadelphia. There was a Philadelphia chapter. Um, went there, that was the first time I was 60 years old, and it was the first time that I ever had a chance to talk to other people with FSHD. So that was kind of a eye-opening emotional day for me. Um, I moved to South Carolina in uh, the summertime of 2019, and then there was no FSHD Society chapter in South Carolina. The closest one was in North Carolina, which is about four hours away. So I reached out to the society and we started the South Carolina chapter in February of 2020, just before COVID hit. So we had one live meeting and then everything else, we, we ended up having to do Zooms. Um, 2022, we started this program, like I mentioned. So we, I host this program a lot um, with June. And I also have my own Facebook channel that I do exercise um, videos, uh, live workshops. Um, so if you want to look up the FSHD wellness channel on Facebook, um, you can find me there. And um, I do a lot of uh, exercises specifically for FSH. So so what, what I do a lot of, and I'm going to cut this short, I practice Kung Fu, Qigong, and Tai Chi. I find those exercises help me in my fight against FSH. And that's what I go over with on these uh, these videos that I do and these particular um, calls that we do with the FSH Society here. So um, if you're interested in any of those those types of practices, um, you know, look me up and check out some of the videos, okay? So that's me. Um, Renee, you wanna take a few minutes and introduce yourself? Um, give me a chance to have a drink of water. <laughs> So um, I have known that I've had FSHD since I was 26, but I had the classic um, misdiagnosis odyssey. I went to a um, orthopedic surgeon when I was 16 because noticed that my right shoulder was drooping and I could never get the hems on my dresses um, even. He told me I had scoliosis. And then um, when I got married, we went, we were living in Biloxi, Mississippi, went to the Air Force Base and I was blessed because that guy said, oh, yeah, you've got FSHD, but we are FSH, as it was known then, but we need to do a muscle biopsy. When they did the muscle biopsy, it said, no, you don't have FSH, you've got polymyositis. So I was in um, college at the time and for nursing, and I looked it up, and I did not have polymyositis, but they told me I didn't have muscular dystrophy either, so I... Um, went about my life and had my daughter because I didn't think didn't have to worry about transmitting a disease to her. Um, we moved to the Maryland area, um, south, Southern Pennsylvania. I went to Johns Hopkins and they took one look at me and they said, Oh yeah, you've got FSH. Um, they did an EMG and it confirmed that I had FSH. And that was back in 1986, 1986. Um, I have two kids. Unfortunately, um, they are both affected. Looking now, I have many people in my family that are affected. It came through my mother's lineage. Um, she had two aunts that had boys that had um, muscular dystrophy. They were diagnosed with limb girdle, but it really was FSH. Um, I have the DNA um, testing from 2004. I've worked off and on with the FSHD Society for decades, um, but now that I'm retired, I have more time to, to devote to the wonderful program that they're doing. And I'm very appreciative of the great things that they offer to all of us and the great work that they're doing to help us find a treatment and a cure and to support us through our journey. So welcome, glad to have you here. Oh, and I'm gonna do a little advertisement. I see some, some new women on here. We also have a women's group, women's support group. If you're interested in joining that, it's called Women on Wellness. Um, and it is just for women who have the disease, and it's a great community. Um, you can find that information by going to the FSHD Society page and going to the calendar. Um, and we're always on the first Wednesday of the month, and you can register right there. We would welcome any new members. Thank you. Great. Yes. Yes, you should. If you don't look at, there's a wellness um wellness group, wellness um, channel, that the, what is that, wellness hour? Oh, it's hour. 
Yeah, there's a variety. There's a uh, there's a uh, program for parents. There's a program for young adults. Um, there's a program for women. I think the women's one started first, Renee. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, wellness came first, and then the women said, we want our own okay. group. And so June, bless her heart, said, okay, you shall have it. Right. Right, right. So there's a variety of uh, of uh, groups that uh, talk. I, I found the talk with the um, young adults um, are uh, very interesting because I, I never thought about um, the troubles that a, uh, a student would have carrying books. And, you know, that I, I didn't have those issues. But some of the sitting in on some of these other sessions is eye opening as to um, uh um, you know, the, the, the issues that, that folks have at any age and, and, and there's such a variety of challenges that we have because this disease is so, so variable depending on who, you know, how it affects you. So, all right. Thanks for now. I forgot to mention that stuff. Um, just running down this real quick. We've got um, folks in, uh, Tina's in Pennsylvania. Uh, Sylvia's in California. Anna, Anne's in Alabama. CH in Vancouver, which makes us an international call today. Susan's in Florida. Like I said, Renee is in Washington State, and I'm in North Carolina. So we're we're covering North America um, pretty well. We were talking earlier. I'm still fending off the the uh, the uh, effects of uh, Debbie here. It's been raining here in North Carolina for three days. So uh, not fun. And I've actually gone to the MDA clinic in Duke at Duke University tomorrow, and I'm hoping the weather breaks. That's a three-hour drive for me each way to get to Duke. So oh, somebody just jumped in from Las Vegas, too, Darlene. So everybody, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um, if it's your first time, welcome. If you're a returning veteran, uh, welcome back. Um, I always enjoy um, having some interactions with folks uh, on these things. So, so the format of today is we're going to talk a little – um, we'll just we'll open the the mic up. Uh, you folks can can talk a little, ask questions, share some some stories if you want, um, and we'll make it. You know, we like to keep these interactive, so um, Frank and Renee are not talking the entire time. Okay, so let me just get going. We've got anybody have any questions before we start? Um, if you have your um, camera off, um, just raise your hand. I think we have a raise your hand thing here. Um, and, or just uh, un, unmute and talk. Um, and if you're, some folks have their video on, so just wave to me and, and we'll try to stop or put a comment out there and we'll uh, I have the comments on the side of my computer. So I'll take a look at that from time to time. Okay, so let's get going. Um, I said, any questions, anyone? Good to go. All right, um, so let's talk about physical therapy first. So some of the, the things about physical therapy, basically the definition of it is, um, exercises and treatments that are designed to uh, relieve pain, help you move better, or strengthen weakened muscles. Uh, treatment uh, is for medical conditions or injuries, movement, and mobility issues. Uh, physical therapy is corrective and preventative. Um, usually, uh, physical therapy is, is just prescribed by a doctor, and um, it is a medical treatment, so it is usually covered by, or some portion of it is covered by insurance. So, um, so that's kind of the, the broad definition of, of physical therapy. Um, the physical therapist, the individual who delivers that treatment for you, um, they, they do have formal training. It's usually a degree, some sort of a degree or advanced degree. Um, most of the therapists that I work with are, are either a master's or doctorates uh, in physical therapy. Um, and they also, and again, I'm speaking from the United States, folks out of the States, there may be different rules. Um, there's usually a state licensing exam that they would need to pass. And there's usually some, some prohibition, not prohibition, pro, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Probationary probationary period where they need to accrue so many hours that they have to um, get before they, they can go for their license. I know my daughter, once she went for her license, she, need to have, she needed to have a thousand hours of clinical work before she was able to apply for her license. So um, a therapist will evaluate you and develop a treatment plan for you. They'll implement that plan or one of their um, assistants will implement that plan for you. They monitor and they tweak it as you go. And they will either discharge you. I graduated 
from my therapy a couple of weeks ago, um, or they'll move you move you ahead um, and advance you. So um, so there's a lot of, of physical therapists, um, a lot of training, a lot of, of of prep work that goes into them being able to to uh, to to see you and and uh, treat you. All right. So um, any questions on the physical therapy, physical therapist um, in that realm? Otherwise, Renee, I'll let you talk about OT. Okay, so occupational therapists are very similar in their education needs as a physical therapist. They need to attend an accredited school um, or university college. Um, both physical therapists and occupational therapists are leaning towards uh, having a requirement of having to have a, or earned a doctorate to be able to entry into practice. I don't think that that is the actual final now, but that's what they're leaning towards um, because they feel that the, the educational need is at that level of a doctorate. Um, occupational therapists are the same. Um, occupational therapists, when you think about the, the generalities of an occupational therapist, they're generally the upper body, uh, making sure that we can provide for our, our activities of daily living. They also have a strong cognitive component in their educational base. Um, when I was a nurse case manager and I worked with um, occupational therapists and physical therapists, and I was concerned about a patient's ability to go home and be safe, I would ask the occupational therapist to do a cognitive assessment of the patient. Um, and so they had that extra um, psych component to their educational process that they were able to do a really good job with that. And I would imagine that, that it's still the same. Um, occupation means the activities that we do every day, such as bathing, dressing, eating, which are also known as activities of daily living or ADLs. Um, as I said, they generally focus on upper body. So arm, chest, uh, shoulders, neck, um, as well as the trunk, because we know that our bodies are all connected. It's not just an arm, it's all connected to the rest of the body as well. So when an occupational therapist comes in to evaluate you, they're going to ask a lot of questions about how you cook, how you're able to eat, um, how you're able to get out of the chair, how you're able to bathe yourself, how you're able to toilet yourself, all of those things that are really important to the basic activities of daily living. Um, to be able to see an occupational therapist, it does need to be prescribed by a physician, um, for your insurance to pay for it. Um, in many states, an occupational therapist is not considered part of the skilled care team. They're an ancillary, but a lot of um, occupational therapy organizations are really working to change that because they really are at the level of a physical therapist as well. Um, so depending upon the state that you're in, you might be able to get a prescription for home health to come in and have the occupational therapist be the only therapy that you get um, in the state of Washington, you can't do that. An occupational therapist is really working under the physical therapist or the RN in the home health agency or in the hospital as well. Um, so that's state by state driven. Um, and it is a medical treatment. What they're providing is definitely medical treatment. Um, and they're highly educated to do what they're doing. Hey, Renee, um, just to interject, next session is who's supposed to speak? So I'm to um, make people aware here. So we have a physical therapist um, coming to speak to us from a home health agency in Bremerton. It's actually the physical therapist that I see. She's very well versed. She knew FSH before she came to see me because she's um, from the Philippines and she worked in a clinic in the Philippines that had FSHD patients. So she was very well versed, but she did a lot of extra research um, when she and I started working. She's also, um, I'm going to say she's an expert. She probably will tell you that she's not, but she really is an expert. Medicare has a program called a maintenance therapy plan. So for most physical therapy orders, when you get a, um, when you go to a clinic to see a physical therapist, they're coming up with a plan for you. Um, that's going to be eight to 12 weeks long. And they want to, to see if you can reach certain goals by that time. Usually it's strengthening and um, being able to do certain tasks. But we know with our disease that um, we're not going to be able to get stronger for the most part. So Medicare does allow for a maintenance program. 
And um, Jana is very good about that with, with Medicare as with any insurance. You know, you have to cross your T's and dot your I's a certain way and use certain verbiage in the um in the, the notes so that med, when Medicare looks at that, they're going to say, oh, yeah, this person really does qualify for the maintenance program. Um, so she's going to talk about that and the importance and, and how it really can benefit our lives. It's a lot of stretching. It's a lot of reevaluating, you know, as we get weaker, um, trying to figure out different ways to do things, different ways to be safe in our homes. Yes. My most recent occupational therapy thing that I did personally in my thought. My biggest, my biggest um, fear right now for me is um, we moved into this house and we have the microwave above the stove. So for, for me to reach to take like a cup of hot water out of that is not a safe thing for me to do anymore. So, so what I did is, and it was just a cool, cool thing that I happened to see because I was out shopping one time. I bought an under-the-counter microwave. So now it's it comes out in a drawer. I don't know if you've seen them. They're kind of new in the market. So you can get a countertop one, but this one kind of sits in where a drawer would be under the counter. So I just, you know, thinking ahead um, because I'm not getting any better. And uh, so just, signs, you know, th those types of things are things we need to think about. Um, that, that, you know, that we take for granted sometimes uh, that great you know reaching in the cabinet reaching in the microwave uh some people take for granted for us it's a challenge um and those are the things that renee and these these occupational therapists who are versed in fsh understand what what our challenges are i just want to take a minute and, and walk through the process so so i have a i have a, a primary care doctor that i see who base does my basic um checkup annually and i also see a neurologist so I said uh, tomorrow I'm going up to MDA clinic up at Duke to meet with one of the neurologists there. Prior to that, I was going to Medical University of South Carolina down in Charleston to see the neurologist there. And prior to that, I was seeing the neurologist up in Maryland at Johns Hopkins. So um, each of those would would then, um, particularly the doctor in, well, the doctor in, in uh, Maryland wanted, I, I was, brand new to see him. So he wanted to establish some baselines for me. So he sent me to a physical therapist to be evaluated. He sent me to an occupational therapist to be evaluated. And then he did some other, uh, he did some breathing and blood, um, heart tests for me. Um, so he had a baseline to run off of that he could, he could go back to every year. So that was my initial contact with, I wasn't seeing a physical therapist for therapy, I just got evaluated by one um, for the doctor to have a baseline. When I came down here, um, I started actually more, more recently, once I started having issues with my, with my, uh, you know, walking upstairs and stuff, um, I asked the neurologist to write me a script. So don't be afraid to ask for it. If the doctor doesn't think, you know, throw that out there. Um, because I, I specifically asked for him to write a script so I could go for PT. So you're paying insurance, take advantage of it. That's my mindset too. So so I go for I went for PT, um, and and like like you know we we've said the uh, the therapist went through every every so many, every month I would do any they would do an evaluation. They did a major one when I started, and every month they would kind of check the boxes again. Like Renee said. We're not getting any better. We're just kind of in a maintenance mode. We're not going to uh, to be healed, um, and they know that. So, um, so they they just keep. So, if you're you know, like I said, if you're if you're paying insurance, if you're Medicare like I am now, um, take advantage of that that benefit. Um, you could go. I think even with my other insurance, you could go 50 appointments a year. They paid for. So um, you can check with your providers to see. What's going on with that? Um, and the other side with the OT, um, those things, you know, the, the things that, 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 again, we take for granted, the width of doorways, um, the grips getting in and out of the, the shower and the grips and in, in the, all those little things that you, you may, you know, people don't think about um, 
are the things that we have to be dealt with. The, the one that struck me the most, and then I'll, I'll stop talking, I'm sorry, was, was when somebody said that they couldn't reach up to wash their hair. Now, I, you know, as, as silly that, as that sounds, um, I wasn't having that problem, and I don't have long hair. Um, but, you know, I was like, you know, something I never thought of. Um, and, and there you go. It's an, another simple thing people don't even think about. That's a challenge for us. So um, any any questions about the PTOT stuff or any any stories you want to share before we move on? Um, you're free to uh, turn your video on, uh, get your, turn your mic on, and we could talk a little bit here. Can I just do a little advertisement? We did have um, a new company. It's two uh, young occupational therapists that – both of them have their doctorate and they also have a, a master's in gerontology. They came to speak to the wellness hour. So it's on video. Um, but that's their role. They, they, their company goes in and assesses homes to make sure that people are safe. Or if you want to build a new home, they'll help you with um, making sure that you have the, the correct things for you that are specific to your needs and your safety needs. Um, and I'm sure that there are other companies that are out there like that as well. They're cer certified. CAPS. Um, I don't remember what it is. I'll figure it out and I'll put it in the chat. All right. Yep. You can Google it while we're. Um, Darlene, go ahead. Yeah, I know this isn't about about this question, but um, I'm in the process of um, signing up for Medicare, and. Um, it's very confusing, and I'm not asking you to walk me through that, but what I notice as I'm checking um, available, or what is it, in network doctors or whatever, that my neurologist isn't in any of them, and he's, he's at the University of Utah, but I live in Nevada, and I'm wondering, um, how do I, is there any way to circumvent that, or do I just have to keep looking? So if you're using traditional Medicare, as long as they accept Medicare, you do not have to worry about whether you're in network or not. If you use a Medicare Advantage plan, which is also known as Part C, then you have to be aware of whether your doctor is in their network. So, okay, I need to speak to somebody about Medicare. I'm not signed up yet. I'm trying to figure everything out. So Part C is the advantage, and they take over the Medicare Part it's of like, stuff. Right. So when you sign up for Part C, you're basically joining an HMO with that specific um, company, organization. Um, there are many, many of them, and they all have different um, things that are enticing to different individuals. Okay. So, and you, yeah, and you want to, if you're going, I have the same issue. Um, I, I'm in North Carolina, and I sometimes see doctors in South Carolina. So you need to make sure that your plan is nationwide, not right. just specific to one state. So Medicare itself is nationwide, correct? Yes. Yes, yes it is. Yes, okay. it is. But it doesn't offer some of the enticements that people are interested in, like dental or vision. And um, prescription drugs. Prescription okay. drugs. Well, depending upon the, the Medicare Advantage, you may have that, you may not have. So it's just really important to check those things out. If you'll send, uh, put your email in, if you're comfortable doing that, I can send you a couple of really good um, PowerPoints on looking at Medicare and the different possibilities that are related to Medicare and Medicare Advantage. Because it's a, it's a, a really important thing to, to investigate and make sure that you get the right program yes. that work best yeah, for and, you. And you probably get daily mail from all these different places. Yes, I mean, you so will start you well, as soon as you're 65. They start yeah. sending you. Well, even before you get, you know, you get at 63, it starts, I think, and they just they ramp it up. But if you, I mean, my wife and I attended a couple of like the local insurance people that that um, sell the Advantage plans. They'll have an open house. They'll have a coffee hour, or they'll invite you to to lunch or something, and take advantage of one of those. Go get a free lunch and ask them your questions because they're experts in it specific to your area. So um, that's why it's it's good to, to go. You know, you're asking me, I'm, I'm on the other side of the country from you. So I know what I know what I have to deal with here. But um, yeah, I made the mistake one time of buying a, um, a, a family plan insurance coverage 
health coverage that was, and I didn't realize it at the time when I checked the box, but it was specific only into Maryland. So yeah. when, and my son was going to school in Pennsylvania. So every time he got to go to the doctor, I had to get permission. You know, I had to get a waiver for him to, for you know, to, to be able to use the insurance there. So be very careful about that, that your plans are nationwide. Um, right. If you want to travel, um, uh, that's the thing. And, and so, like I said, my, my suggestion is to go find somebody local to you that is an, uh, is an expert in Medicare and, and uh, medical coverages, um, and they could, they could point you in the right direction. They'll try to sell you something, but at least they can, they can color in all the, all the blanks for you as far as um, what you need, because we do have specific needs, and you don't want to, um, you don't want to go for some treatments that are, you know, not covered or very expensive. So, right. Okay. Thank you very much for your help on that. Well, no, thanks for the question. That's uh, that's important because some of these things are, uh, some of these things are are covered and some are not, and that's why you need to have the doctor write you the script because they they have all these codes that they know. And the other thing is is to try to find. Um, like Renee was saying, try to find a therapist that knows something about FSHD, um, because if they don't, um, then you need to make sure that your doctor, your neurologist, is specific with the codes as to what kind of treatments that they're gonna they're gonna do for you. All right? And if they're they're not knowledgeable, or you want to ask questions that identify whether they're willing to learn, and some are, and some are not. So you know. It may not be beneficial to them to learn a great deal about a disease that is only going to be one patient when they have 200 patients. Um, so you really want to identify whether they're willing to learn if they don't know, because that's it could be detrimental. They could be asking you to do things that are they going to can be, do harm, right? And they did to they did do harm to me. Yeah, or so. waste your time because yeah. they're not hitting the, the areas of the body you need for them to be hitting. I have a question on stretching also. Go ahead. Um, it's it's very hard for me to stretch. Not that I can't stretch, but it's just some of my joints are so loose and everything that I don't feel a stretch. Do you know what I'm saying? Yep. And and I or I can't get my my major problem is my arms. Um, I. I have to put my arm on a counter or something to be able to brush my teeth. Um, I have anything I have to do. I mean, even to eat, I have to have rest my arms on a table to get my food up to my mouth and stuff. But I also feel the need to stretch some of my muscles, but I can't find the position to get in to stretch. Okay. I, I can't, even start to take it. The only thing I I talked about a while ago in one of these sessions was just working on range of motion. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't, we can't, we don't have the strength to do some things, but we do have the, still have the range of motion. Like I can't raise my arms and hold them to my sides, but I can throw my arm up over my head. I mean, I still have the range of motion. And a couple of the things that I did do, and I don't know if you if you want to go back and look for the video, is I did a lot of I do a lot of stuff lying down, because it takes gravity out of the picture, um, you know, or or in a pool. We talked about last I think this session last month was um, a, a, a a PT person that uh, taught aquatics, um, specific to FSH. So you might want to go back and find that video, because the buoyancy in the water makes it easier for you to move around and to do things. So um, those are just two things like lie down and cause you want to, gravity is what we're fighting, right? right. It's not, it's that the, the, the FSH weakens us, but it's the gravity that really holds us back from doing uh, the, you know, movements specifically up and down. So there's something that some go, I don't want to take too much of a sidebar. Somebody, one of the therapists, and I can't remember her name, she's out in California. Um, she talked about the plane of gravity. Like you can work in uh, on, there's a plane, there's a certain level in front of you that you can work at comfortably. And anything above or below that 
you're, you, you get thrown out of whack because you're either leaning or forward or back to try to maintain your where your arms are. So, he, so she was talking about this plane of gravity. I, I, and I might even be saying that wrong, where it's a, it's a safe, safe space for us to operate in, right? Like a countertop level or something like that. So, um, but again, that's the that's my big thing is is we're always fighting gravity. So if you can take gravity, minimize gravity's effect. Um, you can take advantage of of the operating in that space. And stretching is another good component um, or good indicator, the need for stretching for getting physical therapy and occupational therapy because they can help you identify ways that you might be able to stretch yourself. If you're not, then they can help you with those stretching needs because they are very important. Right, the, on the rack, stretch it out. <laughs> Okay, anybody else have anything? We'll move on to talk about our next fun topic. Find my mouse here. Where am I? Here we are. Okay, so we talked about physical therapists. We talked about occupational therapists. The next topic here is um, personal trainers or fitness and wellness coaches. So um, by definition, Again, these are, are individuals who create and deliver exercise programs for healthy individuals and groups. The key word there is healthy, okay? Um, we may or may not consider ourselves healthy. They may or may not consider us healthy, um, depending on, on who you're talking to. These, you, these people are usually, they usually identify themselves or they usually... Um, suffix themselves with as being qualified or certified. Um, they may or may not have any particular type of formal training. All right. Um, and that's the thing that you need to be careful about when you're looking for a personal trainer or a personal coach. Um, personal training is not regulated in the, in the United States, except for in Washington, DC. Um, I didn't know that. I found that out yesterday. Personal training is not prescribed by a doctor. It's not covered by insurance. However, some of it, some of these programs might be eligible for what's called a Silver Sneakers. Silver Sneakers is a program that is available to older adults through uh, eligible Medicare Advantage programs. So if you're on Medicare and your, your coverage offers Silver Sneakers, you could get into some kind of a personal training program. Usually the Y, um, your local, um, uh, the college here I know offers a, a, a silver sneakers program. Um, and it's important to assess their ability to, to work with you and to understand what your limitations are and, and our special needs. Because again, you could be doing the wrong thing and get seriously injured by that. All right, so the big difference between physical train, a physical therapist, occupational therapist, and personal training is the is the the uh, the, the, the they're learning uh, where they are in their in their um, educational journey. The one side, these folks are are degreed and they're licensed. This side, um, potluck, you know, whatever you're going to get. Um, I'm certified. Um, I'm a certified Qigong instructor. I'm certified by the National Qigong Association, which is a na national uh, thing. I had to do so many hours of training, and I had to do, um, there's a lot of things I had to do to get that certification. So, so others might pay 100 bucks and get a certificate in the mail. You have to be careful as who you're dealing with. Right? My phone is buzzing here. I'm sorry. Um, so that's the big the big distinction um, between the two. So a personal trainer is going to is somebody who hangs out in the gym and wants to make a couple of bucks off of you. Um, normally, I mean that's my stereotype of a personal trainer. Um, or they could be somebody who's who's very good, you know, like like myself. I I do it, and I got certified because um, I just wanted to take advantage of. Um, being able to to reach out and, and teach other people, like I do on these sessions, um, what helps me. So I have a motive, and my motive is to help other people. 
Um, some other therapist's motive might be, might be, or not therapist, uh, trainer's motives might be different. So again, be careful because even if they're certified, well, who certified them? Uh, you don't know. And who certified them? So that, that word gets thrown around a lot. Um, and it, it could mean, it could mean something very, very, there are some very good certification programs um, around the country. And there's other, other ones that are, like I said, you pay a hundred bucks and you get a certificate uh, email to you. So again, um, be careful uh, if you want to use a, a personal trainer. If you did do something that that progressive again, so if you if you saw a, a, a physical therapist and you wanted to carry on those exercises outside of that, that would be an option because you can come to a trainer with a curriculum and say, hey, here's the stuff I want to do. Can you help me? That way you've got somebody yelling at you and trying to motivate you. I know it's hard a lot of times to, to get motivated to exercise on your own. So um, if you have a group that you're working with or, or an individual that you're working with, um, that may or may not uh, um, be something that you want to take advantage of. So um, let me find myself here. Um, Renee, you have anything or anybody want to add to that? You're, you're free to just jump in here. There are some nice videos. Um, I forget the man's name. Who's a personal trainer who worked with an ophthalmologist that in our community that are on the YouTube channels? Um, did some fabulous work. He identified areas that were not affected by the disease that could be strengthened, and they were able to strengthen. Um, right. Right. And there, there is there is another just again pitching the program here. We are trying to get a, a physical therapist or a personal training person. I'm not sure now who it is. I think he's a personal trainer um, who's worked with a couple of um, FSHD folks and they've had great success uh, with him. And I think he's done some some other online stuff with the society. So I think we're trying to get him on this program, but it's just a scheduling thing. He's busy and we're only doing this twice a month on, on a specific time. So it's a matter of aligning our schedules. But um, that's what I have today. Um, so I'm hoping we can just have some chats. People have some experiences they want to share. Um, or more than welcome to move that along. I'm sorry, I'm looking for something on my computer. That's why there's this uncomfortable silence here. Has anybody had a good experience with a physical therapist or an occupational therapist? Uh, this is Ann. I've had both. I had a bad ex experience, a good experience. Um, the Home Health Agency that my physical therapy went through, my first person um, would basically just come in, spend a lot of time on the computer, uh, watch me lift my knees up and down, um, and then he would assign different people that would come and do exercises. And then I never saw the physical therapist again until the end when he came to evaluate me. And I went through this about twice. And so I called the other home health agency in our community and asked a little about their physical therapist. And it was all the difference in the world. With this uh, second home health agency, the physical therapist would, I, I asked her, I said, can I see the same person every time? And so she did, she herself saw me every time she really reached out i could tell to the society to get some of the brochures and help on what to do but i guess i just say that in case there's anybody else like me uh you know in the south we're brought up brought up not to be rude <laughs> but you know after this guy did that twice and on the second time when he came to do the final evaluation, he was late because he didn't even go to the right house. 
he drove 30 minutes in another direction. And I really think he was too busy getting his doctorate to be in the job that he was in. So I would just share that to say, you know, just because they're a physical therapist, it doesn't necessarily mean they're good. And with the second person, maybe because I laid down those rules, uh, you know, about wanting to see the same person every time instead of a different person, uh, that proved helpful. So for what that's worth. I think that's of good, great value. You advocated for yourself and they listened to you. I put in the the chat um, the brochure that the society has for physical therapists, which is really very good. And I try to make sure that if, you know, I haven't had any physical therapist in a long time, but before she came and the occupational therapist too, I made sure that they had it, even though it's not specific for OT, it does have some good nuggets in there for them. Yeah, I'm just scanning the chat to see if we missed anything here. Okay. All right. I just put also, I put in the chat um, the link to my resource page just so folks might want to copy and paste that. FrankHanley.com FSHT. Yeah, let's say you don't have to wade through all of the YouTubes on the FSHT Society uh, YouTube channel there. Um, specific to, to this program. So um, anyway, well, I, I don't have anything else. Oh, Darlene wanna... has a question. I'm sorry, go ahead. Darlene has a question. Um, I was just going to say, I, I'm very lucky and I, I wonder if, you know, anybody else, um, I, I go to an annual visit with my neurologist at the University of Utah and um, they do FSH studies there and everything. And each year when I go, I have, after his visit with me, I mean, they spend a ton of time with me there. I went to UCLA once and I will never go there again. Um, but I went to the University of Utah because I live pretty much halfway between the two. And um, he spends a lot of time with me. And then afterward, he has always sent in either um, he's asked me, would you like to speak to a physical therapist? You know, and the physical therapist each year, I, I'm Canadian and I grew up skiing and they have adaptive skiing um, in Salt Lake. And she says, you come, I'll take you up there for free. And, and um, you know, she explains to me the harnessing and everything. And, and then um, when I was having some problems and stuff, they called in an occupational therapist for me. And he asked me what was the most frustrating thing to me. And I said that I can't play the piano anymore. You would be surprised how much you use your biceps to play the piano. Mm. And um, he made some recommend, like he, um, he saw how much it upset me. And so he made some recommendations on, on uh, how maybe I could work with that and, and, you know, find some help that way. So it's really nice to have them right there at the visit, have your doctor see and talk to you about what your needs might be and then bring in the physical therapist or the occup occupational therapist at the time. Wow. Your doctor. Well, they're talking about the benefits of occupational therapy and uh, physical therapy. It sounds like um, the doctors at the clinic that you see, Darlene, are very, very um, compassionate. Yes, they are. They are. Well, not her, but does she see Dr. Bishisi? I see Dr. Maloney at the University of Utah Medical Center in their neurology department. She 
was comparing and going to another one at UC, UCLA. It's terrible. So did you ever go uh, skiing with your physical therapist? Um, I haven't because it's usually a, a quick trip up and down. My We do have family that live in Ogden, which is about 45 minutes further north. But my husband takes um, part of the day off on Thursday. It's about a seven, six or seven hour drive for us to get up there. And so I, I haven't, but... I've got a son who said he'd go with me too. They'll allow me to take one person. So we're trying to figure out. I'm not sure I'm brave enough. It's been so many years, you know, but it sounds wonderful. It sounds like they have safety in mind as well with the harnessing and whatnot. Right. She explained to me that, that I guess it's a chair or something you sit in and, and she says, I've done it. She she tested it out and she said it feels very like it's almost exactly like skiing. And she says they've adapted it. They can adapt it according to your disability to the point that people who use the, I can't remember what it's called, but you know, the blow technology because their arms and hands, you know, they're quadriplegics. She says they can even take them up and then Behind you, you're attached with a harness to a professional skier as well. And and they're there. She says, they don't do anything unless you lose control. And, but they're just there in case. And, I mean, it, it's – oh, and they also have, like, as we all know, the cold affects our muscles and stuff. They actually have – heated suits that they put you in so that you don't have to deal with I mean it's very tempting I might have to tell my husband I'm going to go away for a week to spend with my daughter and maybe I'll go skiing instead where is this at the University of Utah right no but where is the skiing oh Salt Lake City has ski hills all around it right yeah. yeah. Is that where I you are? In Salt Lake or you're in? I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, okay. Got it. So, and it's a six hour drive to Salt Lake City for me. Got it. Yeah. I was in Salt Lake City once for a conference, and a lot of the people were going up to Park City. Um, oh, yeah. Ski. That, that's yeah. a little further north and east of there. That's a, that's. I call that the rich people ski hills. Okay. Yeah. Well, this was back Park in City. the nineties. So I don't know how it was. Then. Yeah. But I just yeah, remember yeah. They, they flew out early to ski and then they went to the conference and they stayed after for the rest of the week to ski. Cause yeah, they Park were City skiers. is gorgeous. Yeah. Park City is wonderful. Yeah. Right, right around Salt Lake City. There's like two or three major ski hills that are probably within a half hour drive. Oh, good to know. Where we get back out that way again. So, all right. Any anyone else have anything they wanna? We're getting close to our time here. So, um, if not, um, so let me just throw a few wrappers out there real quick. Um, the next session that we're meeting um, here is going to be on the twenty second of uh, this month. And that's going to be talking about in-home therapy, I believe. So you want to check the calendar. Um, and I think we're having a ther actual, 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 ther a real therapist. <laughs> come on, a real live therapist to come on and talk uh, at that session. So um, that's just a continuation on this. We actually flipped the dates because uh, the, the person that was supposed to uh, do the show today um, couldn't make it, so we moved them back to the, the next meeting. Uh, and we did this one as a precursor to that. So um, we set the stage for that coming. Um, and uh, like I said, if you want a copy of the handouts, um, you're welcome to just uh, send me an email or uh, um, put your name in the chat, your email in the chat, and we'll get a copy of the handout to you. 
also. And uh, anyone else have anything? Um, I'll open the mic up again. Anything you want to share? Okay, we will wrap it up then. Um, thank you all for coming along. Thank you, Renee, for your help. Good stuff. Glad thank we were you, able to you. work. I, we have to finally get together and figure out how to meet sometime. We've been doing this for years now. And we just can't get, I'll have to come out to the West Coast because I know you have trouble traveling. So um, we'll, we'll get there. It's um, pretty. And, and Krista, if you're still there, thank you for making sure all the technology worked today. I appreciate that. Thank you all. Okay. Have a all good right. one. So, uh, see you guys in two weeks. Thanks again. Thanks. Be safe. Take care. Thank you.